Welcome to SickCast, brought to you by Sick Research Institute, illuminating every path. Today I have a pleasure to speaking with Iniji from Sick Research Institute, and the conversation we're going to be having is really around Anansahib and how this body can really bring the bliss that we already have within us and are or are or aren't ready to unpack for ourselves. So before we really dive into what Anansahib is and how that really holds space in our day-to-day lives, I really am curious to hear that through the Guru Granth Sahib project that Sikh Research Institute is working on, where in which this bani was released and actually it was completed in January of this year. So you can really get into the depth of every single Bori and learning about what this bani entails and what it means to you personally. I have a pleasure speaking with Energy, who has worked on this project, who has gone into the depth of this bani. So my very first conversation and, and its welcoming way is like asking you, how did this bani resonate with you? What stood out to you? And what was really like, that's the one essence that I knew before, but I have a better understanding of now. Mm. So Vaigruji Ka Khalsa, Vaigruji Ki Fateh Matina, and to our to your listeners, our listeners, it's uh, this Bani has a very special place in my heart. I mean, we can say every Bani is the same, but there are certain Bani's that you connect with for whatever reason at the time of your life, they hold a significance. So Anand Sam and I um, go back probably 25, 28 years ago. Mm. It was a bani that, you know, when I have, when there's turmoil in my life, my practice at that time used to be, okay, I'm going to take a bani and, you know, a Shabbat or whatever, immerse myself and start translating it. Because what that would do for me was focus my mind on that and everything else kind of like slid away. Glorious, yeah. And I thought to myself, okay, I can, you know, I want to do a nansa. Mm. I thought there were six bodies. Mm. And when I began and began with, you know, began doing this, I realized there were 40. And I said, there is no way that I can do 40. Uh, but, you know, it's that commitment that when you say you're going to do something, you you have to do it. So I began um, gingerly, terrified that there's no way. I went to 4010. I translated and went to 4010, and I realized I was not doing it the way, something wasn't right, and that I needed to relook at the way I was doing things. So I went back to 41, and, you know, the word 40, stuck with me what is it unpack that word mm-hmm. and pour is a step step to what step on a ladder right step to something yeah so I've focused on that word and I'm saying okay I'm not moving from step one 41 to the next until I don't get this and when I mean I get this is meaning to internalize it like what does it really mean for me Okay, hold yeah, on. There is that. It, what you just said is very important because it's not to understand it, but to internalize it. What's the difference? So you understand it intellectually, right? Yeah. You, at, at, at a level, you understand it. But internalizing is internalizing is when you put it into practice. How does this, this one or two things affect my life? Mm-hmm. What is it that, you know, because... Guru, I mean Shabbat, Guru is trans is can transform. So if I am in that, what is it that I what is it that I'm missing? What is it that's so important that Guru is sharing and saying something so important that I'm not getting? So what is the point of reading? What is the point of translating? What is the point of understanding if I can't internalize? Mm. That process took me about two and a half years. 
And that this is the Bani I can categorically say changed me, transformed me. Wow. Because it really, um, yeah, this, I mean, my, uh, my mother said, you are no longer the same child that I knew. It's the Bani. Because it's absolutely magnificent. Um, and it's simple to understand, you know, somebody like me at that point. But it was very interesting at that point in my life. I was I was looking for tools. Like, just tell me what I, what you need to do. Yeah, yes. just tell me and I'll do it. Yes, <laughs> it, it's ABC. I'll follow it. Very driven, Type A personality. You know, checklist the whole bit. Yep, did that right. So. Because I was looking for that. I was just looking for a checklist. I was looking for something. Somebody just tell me what I need to do. I want to get there so badly. Just tell me. Yeah. And that's what Guru gave. And that's what I put into my practice. That became mm -hmm. what, yeah, you bet what we call sadhana, practice, whatever. That was mm -hmm. my practice. Beautiful. You really took two and a half years to get every body, every step to understanding what that resonance was in you and what you need to grow into in a world where we want things like a checklist, where in a world where we want things instantly and want things quickly. And I know from my personal experience, like when even when we are reading Bonnie or reciting Bonnie, it's about getting to the last step because then I have completed it without really the essence of the Bonnie really living in me. And that is how I was taught to pray. That is how I, just understand, know the Bonnie, not even understand the Bonnie. Know the Bonnie, recite it with your mouth, and things will be good. You will find the bliss that is in this Bonnie. And I'm like, hearing you, where you took two and a half years to really go into the depth of your own essence, what that really was what was missing in you and transforming yourself and surrendering into the body into the guru i'm nowhere near no. on that path right now but it's inspiring for me to hear this because it also gives me an, an understanding that a there's no timeline and B, it's really about taking the time and asking yourself the right questions. I think the right question for everyone to ask is, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, you used some very powerful words. You used pray. You used, uh, you know, surrendering. Those are very powerful words. What is prayer? I don't know what prayer is. Prayer is actually a conversation. Wow. So if, yeah. So if you're just reciting, is that a prayer? I don't know what a prayer is, actually. For me, it really is. I mean, I'm not talking about the protocol and everything, but you have to do your nickname. I'm not talking. I'm talking beyond that, right? Mm -hmm. It really is a conversation. Mm -hmm. And... So if I don't understand something or if I'm looking for something or I am in turmoil, where do I go? I go to Guru. There is nobody else. So then that's a conversation. Right. It's not, it's not worship. It's not prayer. It's not that. This relationship is one of... Um, if I can say of a lover and a beloved, the, mm -hmm. beloved, the B, the capital B, and this is a lover. So between the lover and the beloved, there can be no prayer. It, it is really is a conversation about um, a very open and genuine conversation because that's love-based. Mm -hmm. right? And you mentioned surrender. We of ourselves, human beings, can never surrender because the I within us is so strong. It is our protection. Mm -hmm. It really is self-preservation. So the I, we just cannot surrender. Surrender 
happens when something far greater enters your life. When you feel a force far greater than yourself, that something, that entity or that thing or that feeling is something you surrender to. And it's not even you, it happens automatically. Mm. So, you know, we have a saying, Matha Girdai, when the forehead falls, it falls on its own because it has received something far greater. It is that. So when we use these words, it defines our constant relationship, right? How mm -hmm. are we looking at, at these, as these words, at this relationship? I would call it a relationship. Because if the relationship is that far, you between between you and where, whoever you're praying to, mm -hmm. it's always remain far. So the question is, how do you make it close? Close, yeah. That's a whole different way of looking at it because it, I can tell you from my personal experience, it was all about learning the Bonnies, being able to recite them, being able to sit in the Gurdwara and listen to them. But I was never taught to cultivate a relationship with the Guru or bring it even closer in, into my life. Wow. So it's good. It's actually excellent that you've learned the Bani when you were when you were young, right? Because it will always be with you. Mm -hmm. Now's the next step. What are you right. reciting? Right. The seed has been sown. It's in. Are you cultivating it? How can it grow if you're not nurturing it? If you're not watering it? If you're not looking after it? Mm -hmm. Your parents did the job. Of sowing the seed. Now it's yours to take it further. Right. They tilled the soil, they planted the seed. And the question for you is what are you doing about it? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I don't mean you, I mean me. I mean, you were fortunate that you had this with you. I, being raised in a Roman Catholic uh, boarding school, did not have that privilege. Mm -hmm. I knew my, uh, I knew all, I knew the Our Father and everything that went on in Mass, like the back of my hand, because that was my upbringing. Mm -hmm. so I had to learn everything. So when you are have to learn, there's a different, uh, it's because you want to, right? Yeah. And then you can't just recite because you don't know. And so you have to know what you're reciting. So it's a different journey. And yeah. that's what all of us come through it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. um, yes, while the seed was so uh, was planted, everything the environment around me did not was I pushed that seed back down because mm -hmm. everything else, every other fate took over or whatever because of the conditions. Yeah. So it was it was going through it. Uh, so when I when Ananda fell into my lap again, was not, not fell into my lap, hold it. There was another researcher assigned to this, to do the commentary on this body um, last year. And they could not complete it. They could not, for whatever reason. And, it's a, and it came to me then, you know, you need to do this. So I said, of course, you know, uh, but I can tell you what, What struck to me this time was there was nothing to do. There was no checklist. There was, there was only one thing that stood out, and that was in 44. And I just, at 44, when I came to that line, I just, like, how could I have missed it? It was Shabbat Taropiaro, love the Shabbat. Such a simple line, love the Shabbat, right? Half a line. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I mean, it didn't even register 26, 27 years back because I didn't know what love was. 
But this time when that line came, I was like paralyzed. That's it. To me, that was the code. It actually, it, like Guru has cracked the code for me. All you need to do in any now is love the Shabbat. Wow. Everything else will fall into place. Mm. Because what does love do, right? Love, and I don't mean about the transactional love, which we talk about. That's not the love I'm talking about. Love for me, from what I have uh, experienced through the guru is, yes, it is unconditional, but it's very demanding. It is, it is a love which is, there are no expectations. There is no complaint. There is just love. In that love, there is, yes, there is a virag, there is a longing, intense longing. There is a single-minded dedication, devotion, whatever you want to call it. But it is very much... That this is it. This is love. Right? And I will do anything and everything for this love. You're never doing it for the, for the person or the entity. You're doing it for your love. And when you're doing things for your love, you, there's no such thing as sacrifice. And there's no such thing as I'll only do so much. Mm -hmm. For your love, you will do anything and everything. And then that love actually removes the ego within you, removes the jealousy within you, removes the pettiness within you. It's you, that love that transforms you. It's that love that makes you nirmal, which becomes unblemished. It is that love that does that. Mm -hmm. So it's not any other thing. It is pyar. For the, the only thing that can move you is love. There's nothing else. Because when you are in that love, you blossom, right? You let go. Your guards come down. And then things happen on their own, but you don't even know how they happen. Yeah. So it is that love that does it. So, you know, I mean, I have a dear friend and she asked me, so I'm not going to read the Pori Poris. You've done the work. Just tell me what I need to do. So Checklist me. again. <laughs> I mean, that's how we operate, right? I'm not doing it. You've done the work. Just give me three things what I need to do. And, and I said, okay, just love the shepherd. And she said, what? She said, what does that even mean? I said, exactly. <laughs> What does it even mean, right? Yeah. She says, no, tell me. I said, make Shabbat a part of your life. Listen to it. Think about it. Sing it. And she said, well, I can't sing. I said, singing is not just vocal. It's actually praise, glorification, thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. And then walking. Mm -hmm. What had been said. So um, that's it. But Anand Sab is also, you know, very practical. I mean, at least during my early stages when, you know, when I did it, when I was, when this Barney was working on me, it was, you know, when I was so wanted those, just tell me what to do. Yeah. Right. So in the latter half of the Barney is like, when I came to it, it was, oh, my ears, you're here to hear the divine sound. What are you listening to? And I'm saying, oh, my gosh, my ears, what are you listening to? You're here to listen to something so magnificent, and you're listening to what? So I change, right? That's the transformation. It's a conscious decision. What am I listening to? And that's how the transformation Mm -hmm. Or the change in you, where you make a conscious decision not to listen to a few, whatever it is that you're listening to, and what is it that you need to listen to. 
Right. And then the Guru said, oh, my eyes, you're here to see the divine light. You know, what are you seeing? And then it becomes very real. What am I seeing? Oh, my tongue, you're here to spread sweetness. Erasnam. Do you hear, you know, to praise the creator? What are you using your tongue for? You change when that becomes part of your consciousness. And that's why I say this, Bonnie, he stay, has, has stayed with me and stays every day, every day. Mm -hmm. Every moment, like, what are you listening to? What are you looking at? It's constant. Right. That's how body works. And Ansa particularly, you know, because it in the body, oh, my body, you're here. You've come here. What have you done? So it's very real. It's not abstract. It's very real. At least it was very real to me. Mm -hmm. So you went through every senses, all of our senses, and the question that that are in the body became literally the question you start asking yourself into assessing yes. and choosing how you use your words, how you choose to hear, how you, what you choose to see. Yeah. There was something so beautiful that you said earlier when you were explaining love. You said it is. It's very de demanding. What did you mean by that? So if I look at the life of Guru Amar Das, because this is his bani, right? Mm -hmm. Guru Amar Das was the richest guru. He became guru at a much, in, in his 70s. He had wealth. He had fame. He had a following. Yet. He chose when he came to Guru and submitted to um, Guru Angad Sahib, right? His task, I mean, not he would wake up every morning and go to the river to get the water. This is now, think about it if you just remove the Guru part and everything. An elderly man going to the river day in and day out, regardless of the weather, to go and get water for his guru's bath. Is that not demanding? Mm. It's a dem Is that what you put on yourself? What you will do for your love, it is through the rain, through the storm, through everything, when you go, to do serve your guru or to serve that. I mean, today we have a little bit of a snowstorm. We said, okay, I'm not going to the Gurdwara because, you know, X, Y, and Z. And that's rightly so wrongly. I'm not saying that. But here, that is the love. Regardless of the circumstances, I'm doing this. Regardless of the circumstances, whether I'm going to be put in prison or not for saying this, I'm going to do this. That's mm -hmm. that love that is demanding. Mm -hmm. That um, it's nobody else demands it from you. It's your love that defines it, and it's you could call it dedication. You can call it that, but it is. I don't, you know, this word. We it becomes very hunky dory or very thing or very abstract, unconditional, and this whole. And you think, oh no, there's nothing. Yes, all that is there, but there is definitely. Definitely a dedication. There is definitely a single-mindedness. You know, when you go to when you go to school to study, you go yeah. through your 11, 12, then you mm -hmm. go towards college. So you put in the time and the effort to get a degree. Right. Right? Because yet for some reason we feel that this part should come to us within a day. Well, I did my part every day, so why am I not feeling this? And you know you spent less than 20 minutes or half an hour, but you haven't studied it. You haven't put the time in what you would do for your degree. Have you done that? Yeah. The answer is whatever the answer is. But yet you want those results. Yeah. How can so in, in the equation doesn't kind of work? Right. Where is the where is the effort? 
I mean, grace is 24-7. Grace is always present. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as, you know, Jado Mehr Hoi, when the grace happens. Grace is, we are graced from day one. Even before we are born, we are graced. The question is, do you feel the grace? Wow. That's the question. Yeah. What does Anand mean? Anand is, in simple terms, Anand is joy and happiness. Um, but in this, however, in this Bani, Anand Guru uses it as the ultimate happiness, the ultimate joy, the ultimate bliss. You know, when it's the ultimate joy, the ultimate happiness, then it transfers to bliss. And what is it that the bliss that is perpetual, the joy that is perpetual, so any joy that you or I experience is always temporary or mm -hmm. transient because it is connected to our senses. It's connected to people or things that are temporary. So, you know, a birthday party, a, a degree, uh, whatever it is, it's very short-lived. Mm -hmm. However, the joy that the Guru is speaking about that joy comes from the connection with the entity within you, within the divinity within you. And when you connect this lowercase self, you and I, and us, connect with the higher S, higher self within us, that connection brings you the ultimate bliss. Mm. As that connection is as you have that, because when you have that, nothing touches you. Nothing can touch you. So that even when you are sitting on that hot plate and being tortured, Pacha says, Tera pana mita lage, sweet is thy will. Because the experience of that higher self within you, that is guiding you and that is now you know, your decisions, your life is based on that. Mm -hmm. It's no longer based on the temporary things. Mm -hmm. It is now based on something far eternal because that connection has been established. So that's that ultimate bliss. It only flows when the being, lowercase being, connects with our uppercase being. Right. That's that connection. And it only happens through the Guru. And that is what Guru Amr Das Sahib says, that he says, you know, that everybody is seeking this bliss, but this bliss can only come through the Guru. Because Guru shows you the way. And, and, and if that is, and that's the question, if we want to even yearn to experience that. I mean, mm -hmm. experience is not, but even if we desire, if even there's an inkling, then we have to do something. We have to walk towards something. We have to go somewhere. It's not going to happen all of a sudden. Yeah. Something we need to do. We need to take that first step. Mm -hmm. And so the first step is, you know, if it happens to the Guru, because Guru shows you the way of how to do it, is how to... You know, the years, I, I told you about the years, eyes, and the tongue. But I think the ultimate is really love the Shabbat. It's the easiest. And how nobody can tell anyone how to love, right? Mm -hmm. We all love in our own way. Right. And whatever the way you want to love the Shabbat, love that. Because that love will change you. That love will do the things. What? you need to do nobody defines it for you your love defines it and that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it wow there's so much about bliss and eternal happiness in the body and through the body but one thing that stood out to me when i was reading i'm not even gonna say understanding i was reading the words was that this body is used 
I use it not even the right word, is recited when there's a happy occasion, but also in sorrow, which got me puzzled. Like if this is a, a blissful body and so much is in in lying in the happiness, how can we then recite the same body in sorrow? What, what do you think? What have so you Martina, learned? So, Martina, define sorrow for me. Sorrow define for me. Define sorrow for me. Mm, sorrow for me is pain. Sorrow for me is going through a difficult time in life or losing a loved one, even. So let's, you know, let's keep that going through a difficult time in life. It's diff, you know, different. Let's see. Let's focus on losing someone. You are. And, and Guru says, um, cry if you need to cry, but what are you crying for? You're crying for, you, you know, cry because we are the separated ones, right? What the ultimate truth is that we, we come into this world and we will leave. There's, that, that That's not going to change. It's cry. Did they, did you cry for that? Yeah, cry for that. But actually the real cry and the real pain and the real thing is that the separation from the one, from the beloved, is actually the real cry. Everything else is that. So when we say that we recite this Bani at the end of every congregation, every Every, and that's the protocol of, you know, the, the community has decided, had, has done that. Because it is bliss, and it, I think it's also in the last body, which is 40th body, which they have, which is included. It says, Anam Sono Vardpagyo, Sagal Manor So Anand, listen to the Anand, to the Bani. But Bhagyo. What does but Bhagyo mean? Of oh, fortunate ones. Who are the fortunate ones? You and I. We are not asked to be fortunate. Guru is already saying you are the fortunate ones. But we don't feel fortunate. If we felt fortunate, there would be no sorrow. There would be no pain. Here the Guru is saying, you are the fortunate ones. Listen, O oh, fortunate beings, to this body. By listening to it and by being me to suckle all your desires within your, within your mind will be fulfilled. Because the Supreme Brahm, the creator, the entity, you will experience that within you. And all the sorrow and pain will vanish. Mm. That's the last body. So that sorrow is mentioned. Listen to the Bani. When we say listen, it is imbibe this Bani because this is the Bani which will remove the pain, suffering from within you. So it's a reminder. Don't cry for the temporary. Don't be caught up in this. Go to the essence, to the bani, which will remove this pain from you, whatever you're feeling. There's an acknowledgement of the pain, that there is pain, there is sorrow, but what will remove that, it is the bani. Does that right. make a little bit of sense? It does. I understand. How do we remove that pain? Yeah. Yeah. How do you separate yourself from and that pain? And how do we remove that pain? Yeah. And the pain can only be removed, the sorrow can be only be removed when we experience that divinity within us, right? We connect with that divinity within us. Because then we become divine-like. 
We all have the potential to be divine like. We can't be divine, but the potential for all of us to be divine like is very much there. Is there. And that's why in this entire Bani, Guru addresses us, Santo, saintly beings, listen. There's no condemnation. There's no finger pointing, you got to do this. You must do this. There's not, nothing of that sort in this Bani. It's like Santo, listen. Very lovingly, you know, at an elevated state, speaking to that self, that higher self within us. Mm. That don't think of yourself as, as someone put down. No, you have the jyot within you. You are already saying, just get that out. Just experience that. Connect with that. Very, it's very much of that. Because when you connect with that, you will experience this bliss. So this is this really, honestly, an intimate exploration between the lower self and the higher self. This is that. Is it easy? No. Why? Because it churns you. Because you have to look within. And for me, when I needed to look within, it wasn't pretty. Um, it was dark. Um, there was a lot I needed to fix. At least I thought... I could fix it, but it took, but there's definitely that. So this is, this is a, it's a body which really, um, it's a lot of introspection. If you choose to go with that way, mm -hmm. I mean, it's short. Each paragraph is five, five lines. Um, poetically, the first, um, first one and a half line and the last line are the same. Because the central idea is there, right? Mm -hmm. And the way it is. And it's repeated. So it means there's great emphasis put on that idea in that body. In that. So it's easy to focus on it then. It's not a whole lot of things. It's just like one thing that you got to focus on. Right. In that one portal, which right. makes it for somebody like me easier because... You know, I, I get distracted and I like to write my notes. Okay, what what was what was the essence on this body? What do I need to do? Point one, point two, got it. Okay, now I got to practice that. Right. If you're going to give me 10 things, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. You give me two things, three things. Okay, two things will get done. Mm -hmm. So this is that body. I'm not being flippant, but it's not, but it's it's really tangible. It, it, it it's You can do it that if you choose to. Right. So it's not something which is far fetched, you know. It's very simple. It's very, you know, for people who are very methodical and say, okay, just give me the steps. Tell me how what to do it. Well, here are the steps. Go. Yeah. For those who choose to open themselves up for this body without a timeline, without um rushing to the end. What would be the advice that you would give someone, including myself, to really stop and love the Bani, love every single word and dive deeper into what that word or what that sentence would mean to me? So I don't really give advice. <laughs> Who am I? Right? Who am I? No one. I would just say. You, sorry, you say that, yet you're, it's so beautiful because you said, you also said the lower self connecting with the higher self. Yes, it's an internal journey. With the humanity, with um, what we are seeing, what we are seeing in the world and what we are doing in this world, when someone has gone through their own courage, journey courageous journey of going from that lower self to that higher self and really stepping into the essence of something that what that means to you and even though it's going to be different for every single one of us because you have gone through that path twice not even once twice with this specific body hearing your guidance and anyone can take what they need to take from this and can invite themselves and open themselves up if this resonates for them. 
So I hear when you say, who am I? But I'm like, yeah, you are you you are that higher self that is connecting and is able to not guide, but open up someone's eyes to something deeper. You know, we always, at least when I was growing up and we say, oh, things, you know, transformation doesn't happen. These are just words. How can Guru transform, right? It's Shabbat. It's, you know, it's words. It's this. Because you have, and that's where the mind spins everything. Right? The, oh, the mind makes stories. 10, <laughs> yes. Can find 10,000 drinks. That doesn't, it's not going to happen. Um, it's just words. It's just people just talk. They don't. But the only thing I tell anyone is, look at me. Somebody so far removed from the faith. Um, I was. And it was only when Shabbat Guru entered my life that this transformation happened. And I learned Gurmukhi and began the journey. So something must have happened, right? Mm -hmm. For that Shabbat Guru to, something must have happened. I cannot define it. I cannot put it into words. But I know there was a before and an after, right? Mm -hmm. It's very clear to me. Mm -hmm. I say, so these words which people say that it doesn't happen, for me, it's very real. You know, Guru is very real. It's not, it's not, and that's why I say it's a conversation. It's, okay. you say the words, Guru Aung San. What does that mean? It means that the Guru is always with you, right? That's feeling the presence, being with the presence, knowing the presence. Mm -hmm. So even the words that we use, don't use them if you're not feeling them. And what does that mean to be in the presence, with the presence? You have to want it. You really, the individual has to yearn for it. Look within and say, is this all that I am? Because that was my question. If my life was just eating, sleeping, procreating, it was not a life worth living. There had to be something greater. Mm. And it is that... To ask yourself the first question, what is it that you want? And that you have to be honest with yourself. Because you know what happens? Then you beat yourself up too much. Oh, and you commit. Okay, I'm going to do 10 parties in X amount or whatever it is. And you, for whatever reason, it doesn't happen. You're very hard on yourself then. And that's not the point. Point is not to be hard, is to acknowledge that you are human. And this is a journey. And the guru is there for you. The guru is always there. You walk one step, guru walks ten to receive you. It's that feeling that you enter this relationship with. It's not with the relationship that I'm going to conquer. There's no conquering. Mm -hmm. There's no, it is that. The journey is the destination. Yeah. There's no gold star you're going to get at the end of it. There's no, no, you know, there's no certificate. It's that journey. So in that journey, however you choose to begin it, at, in whatever timeline, but more than anything else, don't beat yourself down because that's just, takes away from everything. Right. It just introduces negativity within and the love. Nobody's judging you. Guru doesn't judge. You are judging yourself to be able, and that's when I say to be honest with yourself. That itself is the hardest thing to be for all of us yeah. when we are honest with our own self. Forget about being honest with anybody else. I'm not even I'm just talking about within our own self, honesty within. We are the hardest being on ourselves than on anyone else. The conversation we have in our minds about ourselves are so far demeaning than we 
we would not even say those words to our best friend or to a loved one. So having this mirroring going inwards, opening yourself up for the, the unconditional love. Oh my gosh, it, it, it's going to be, it's going to be a journey indeed. So the mind is very clever, right? And 95% of the shepherds in the Guru Granth Sahib are addressing the mind because the mind is moves before even you can blink an eye and it will mm -hmm. spin everything to its advantage. You know that. You can justify anything. Mm -hmm. It's towards the mind. Thank you. The mind needs to to be to be able to understand and it's tough the heart the, the journey between the heart and the mother is the longest journey because the heart knows but it's the mind that controls mm -hmm. and when the heart and the mind are in sync mm -hmm. yeah even that on its own is a journey to keeping it in sync to holding on to that essence and that knowing then what you get from being through going through that your own inner transformation. Wow. Oh my gosh, I've loved this conversation. You know, for me it was because when I looked at the life of Guru Ramadas Sahib, I mean he was and for him to write this, that he had experienced this bliss. And he was telling his mother, I means through the voice of the mother telling the world, when he found the Satguru, and that was Guru Angad Sahib, right? I mean, think about it, what humility and what all he went through, mm -hmm. that a 70-plus-year-old man is. If I look at it regardless of Guru and anything, that there was something so magnificent that transpired between Guru and the devotee that the Guru acknowledged it, that the Guruship was given, was bestowed on it on Guru, um, Guru Amrita Sahib. And then Guru Amrita Sahib writes this for all of us. This is the way you too can mm. experience the bliss. This is that generosity. This is that vastness because you are saintly beings. You are the fortunate ones. It's not that only I am the fortunate one. I have experienced this, so I'm not going to share this. No, this is you too are the fortunate one. You are the saintly beings. So this is that uh, magnificence mm. of the Guru. Beautiful. So I, you know, for me, uh, it was like, what did he experience? What was that? So I'm looking at it in that light as well. And then I'm saying, oh my gosh, you know, at 70 plus, uh, to come into a different path. Mm. So what is time? What is age? Yeah. It's all there, right? Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for taking us through your journey through Anand Saib and sharing so openly and so vulnerably with us. I have loved the conversation. I'm sure that anyone who's inspired to listen to this will be touched in their own ways. Um, if this is something that you are open to, I invite you to go into exploring Anand Sahib and really understanding the depth of every single sentence, every single word, every single meaning that is coming to you for you. You are listening to SickCast by Sick Research Institute, illuminating every path.